Here we are with Bernina Q-Series Mastery. We are gonna do the sit-down Q-Series today. We'll do a separate video for the frame Q-Series. Today, we're simply doing the sit-down Q-Series. So this will apply to the Q16 or the Q20 in any of the three available tables. So you've got the lift table, which is what we're at right now. You've got the foldable table, and then you have the koala table. Same information. You can download this workbook that we're going through from the description tab of this video. We put a link in there, so go to the description, click on the link, and that'll allow you to download your mastery workbook. Okay, here we go. So we are gonna start, there's a welcome thing, you can read that. We're gonna start with page four. And Lori is getting introduced to this machine. She ain't been introduced to this machine yet, so here we go. All right, we're gonna talk about the touch screen. So here's our introduction to the touch screen. And you can look off of my book while okay. you're at it. Okay, so here we are. There's two different menus. If you touch the little house, okay, that gives you the selection menu. If you touch the needle, or I mean, sorry, the foot with the stitching, you want me to catch uh -huh. that? that takes you to the sewing menu. So that's your sewing menu and your selection menu. Those are the two things we have. On your touchscreen navigation, the top left side shows your tension, right there. If you were to touch that, it would show you what your tension is set at and give you the opportunity to change it. We're not gonna do that. So up or down. Uh -huh. So close that out. Right underneath it, you will see a picture of a foot with an arrow. The arrow's pointing up. That means the foot is up. The arrow's pointing down. That means the foot is down. Okay? Right underneath that, you're gonna see, they don't have it, but right underneath that, you're gonna see P1, which is in effect player one. So if you have more than one person sharing the use of this machine, you can set your settings for each individual. So you could hit a plus button and you could add right there where it says two, touch that. You could say this is Lori's. Okay, green, uh-huh. All right, then you could go and custom set all of these different settings. Say you like 12 stitches per inch. Say you like a tension of 4.2, uh, you know, whatever it is, and then hit your green button. And now there you are. And then the first person, if they want to use theirs, they touch it and it goes to their settings. Cool. It is cool. So you can save quite a few people in there. Okay, the next one down is the bobbin. So you have got a bobbin sensor of sorts on this. So it's not like the bobbin sensors in the regular machines. In your manual, there's a chart. Mm -hmm. The chart is by uh, thread type. We're using the Bernina, these are M-class bobbins. So it's this size bobbin, it's a big bobbin, it carries a lot of thread. And they have put a chart in your manual of how much, how many yards of thread goes on this bobbin for all different types of thread. Oh. So um, we can say, if you were to touch where it says there's 100 yards on a full bobbin, let's say you're using Orofil 50 weight, there's 130 yards per full bobbin. And then green, see how that changed? And then if you only put a half a bobbin in, you could pull that back and say you only have half a bobbin. What the machine will do is it's tracking how much thread is being used in the stitches. And when it tracks that you've used 77 yards of thread, it's gonna say your bobbin's empty. Okay, close out of that. You so have change to, that? It doesn't matter. You're gonna have to reset that bobbin every time you start, because like on the, on the Q series, it'll actually stop stitching when it thinks it's out of bobbin. So you need to make sure you're up on top of that if you're using that bobbin sensor. Every time you put a bobbin in, you have to say how many yards are in it so that it will um, keep up with you. Okay, um, just like on our regular Bernitas, you'll see the, the needle right at the top, uh-huh. So it's set for needle down, and you can change that to needle up if you'd like, just like that, yep. Okay, the next side on that side, you will see um, 
I'm not going to do that yet. We're going to, well, no, we'll do that. Okay. Programming the foot control. We can do that. So at the bottom of that screen, you'll see the foot pedal. See the touch of, there you go. So right now what's highlighted is a set stitch. So it's going to do a set stitch when you start. If you don't want that, you can touch that, turn that off. You have to turn it to something else. Ah, uh, okay. So you can make it needle up down only. So see how the icon on the screen changed? So it's always gonna tell you right on the screen what it is that it's set to do. Go ahead and touch that, the foot again. So you have the option of the set stitch, the needle up down, and the foot up down. Those are your three options for that, okay? All right. Do, 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 do. Right next to that, let's see, we already did that. Okay, we're gonna skip page six because that's about the framed model. Um, and they're not telling you about the rest of the screen in order. So I'm gonna finish with the screen. So <clears throat> right next to that, you see the two dots? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Touch that. Okay, so what you just did is you turned the back kick on your foot pedal to the start mechanism. So now all you have to do is tap your heel kick on your foot pedal and it'll start stitching. You do not have to press down on the foot pedal. So you just tap it, it starts stitching and you just go. Is so, that for just the BSR-1 or is it's that for, for any, any use at all? Any use at all. Okay. So if you don't want to have to pay attention to the foot pedal, if you just want to stitch, you can set your foot to just heel tap and it'll start. You heel tap again, it stops. Mm -hmm. Okay, so go ahead and hit exit. So now that's turned off. Now to start it, you have to depress the foot pedal and to stop it, you would let off with the foot pedal. That's okay. fairly so, self-explanatory. So now it's off. It's off. Your, your back kick is turned off for your sewing. Okay. okay, if we look there, SPI is stitches per inch. That's the default setting. You can tell it's the default setting because nothing is in yellow. So it's set at 10 stitches per inch, 250 stitches per minute in BSR one. So we have three different BSR settings. BSR one, BSR two, and BSR three are identical to what is on our regular machines. So BSR1, it idles, and then when you move, it catches up with you. BSR2, it waits for you to move and then stitches. BSR3 is basting stitches. And then MAN underneath there, you can set that machine to manual and you can go as fast as you wanna go. It'll go all the way up to 2,000 stitches a minute, which is really, really fast. fast. <laughs> so go ahead and select uh, BSR2 and you'll see that you don't get stitches per minute because it's not idling, it's, it's, it's a different thing. Okay, again it's set at 10 stitches per minute or per inch. Go to BSR3 and now you have three different basting stitches. Okay. Stitches per inch, SPI, stitches per inch, one, two, or four. So you would normally do what, two? Is that the... Uh, it, it, I would play with it, see what you like. I, I think two is too big. I usually switch it to four. The four? Because it, it squishes things a little more. Okay. But I mean, I'm sure there's people that like one. I, uh -huh. It depends on what you like. So one would go like the... Yeah, huge. The, yeah, okay. Huge stitches, yeah. And two is going boom, 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 boom. And then four will be boom, 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 boom. So, so it's holding that down more. firmer. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I like that because I'm a control freak, apparently. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Go ahead back to BSR1, which is our default setting. Um, let's go into the stitch settings while we're in here before we get into oiling and threading. Let's go ahead and so touch the home button. Okay. So now you have your. Um, that would be, it's the same as a regular machine, the mm -hmm. home icon. Okay, so you have your eco setting. So you get all your settings set up the way you want it and you can touch eco, put it to sleep, come back, touch the screen again, and it'll come right back up and it'll be right where you left it. Okay, um, this is what takes you back to stitching. Okay. This, just like on our regular machines, manual. is the manual. 
So you can look up whatever you want to in there. This is kind of a funky little deal. Go ahead and touch that. So you want to calculate the square area or whatever of your machine. You okay. can do that, I guess. Whatever. <laughs> okay. You got to clear out of there. Okay. Um, this, that with all the stitches on the end there, mm -hmm. if you are doing quilting for somebody else oh. and you want to know how many stitches you just stitched, I'll tell you. Oh, okay. So if you hit the that little button there, it resets. So that will show you, say you just started a, a quilt, you want to know how many stitches you have in it, you can start a stitch counter and it'll tell you. Oh, that's neat. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Go to, and then you're going to have to touch it again. Okay, now go to your setting. Yep. So here is where you can change a lot of different things. So um, if you touch your set stitch, you can tell it how many stitches you want it to take. Okay, so you can go all the way up to six. Six, or all the way just down to two. Okay, and again, you use your breadcrumbs just like on the regular machine. So you go back one to your settings. You can touch the little die, and you can change your screen color. That's your choices, okay? Okay, go back to your breadcrumb. You can go to the eyeball. If you do not want your top sensor to tell you when the thread is broken, you can turn it off. If you don't want to use your bobbin sensor, so right now it's turned off. See how it's red mm -hmm. and the eye is closed? Mm -hmm. So if you don't want it tracking yards on your bobbin, you can turn it on. If you're gonna use that function, you need to turn it on. If you're not gonna to remember to change your bobbin function, I would recommend leaving it off. Okay, come back. Okay, that is when you go too fast on your BSR and it makes that beep, 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 beep noise, you can turn that off. <laughs> would you recommend that for a beginner? I would not, because you're never gonna get yourself trained yeah. if you don't have some sort of a cue to tell yourself when to slow down. Okay, come back. Okay. This is, uh, we're not gonna touch this because we don't wanna do this, but this is uh, recalibrating your screen, just like on our normal machines. Here's how to reset, go ahead and touch that. You can reset the brightness. See how that's for your screen, and then this is for the light, there you go. Okay, come back to the machine. Okay, right here you can change the language. Put it in the Netherlands or not. Go back to the slime machine. That's okay. Okay, um, here's your factory settings. So if you touch there, you can restore everything. Close out of that. Here it, yep. You can do an, a firmware update. So this machine firmware updates just like all the other machines okay. do. Um, you can get yourself a tutorial on how to clean it. There's your cleaning. Now, does this have the, um, this doesn't cut thread, does it? No. So it doesn't, it's not like that one that we have on our machine. No, you won't have to clean the thread cutter, no. But it'll show you how to clean how it. How to clean it. Okay, and then that'll show you how to oil it. Okay, and you'll notice it says right up the top there, very clearly, this machine needs to be oiled once a day. So every time you use this machine, you've got to oil it. Every single time. Okay, go back one. And this last one is for your tech. So if there's any kind of service that needs to be done to it, your tech can get in here and log whatever he needs to log or she. Um, and then that last little thing is really only appropriate. I don't know, I guess you could. Okay, go ahead and touch that. So that is an optional accessory you can get. We have it installed on the Q24, but it is a laser light that attaches right here and it's for your pinpoint needle position. Okay. So uh, the laser light will shoot right straight down and tell you where your needle's gonna hit. Cool. And then you can aim your needle in the right place, okay? We don't have that installed on this machine. Now you want it closed out? Yeah. Okay. So that is where we are there. Now let's talk about how we clean and oil it. Or maybe we should, you know what they didn't do on here? They don't give you an overview of where all the parts are. So how about I give you an overview of where all the parts okay. are so that you know that. Okay, this is your thread stand. It's a telescoping thread stand. 
you can get an additional one. So this little slot that's in here will open up and take another thread stand. So you can put more thread up in there if you want one. There's a, an optional thread stand. There's also a thread stand you can get that attaches over to this side and goes this way. And it's for decorative uh, spools like metallic threads uh -huh. or whatever. It's a supplemental thread guide and it goes this way. This should come with your machine. So this is the thing you put underneath the large cones of thread that keeps them from going rattle, rattle, rattle on your spindle. You're gonna thread your top thread from this side. You're gonna thread your bobbin thread from this side. And I'm gonna show you how to thread a bobbin and how to thread the top thread in a minute here. So if you didn't have the big cones, would you take, you just take this that off? off? Okay. Yeah. Yep, it just pulls right off. We don't have a big pulse. Yeah. We're actually not going to use that. Okay. <clears throat> if you look right here, you see how there's a little uh, felt or foamy pad thing right mm -hmm. there? And then there's two thread guides. If you're using just regular thread, you're going to come from here down to this thread guide. If you're using, say, a rayon thread or a thread that's prone to breakage, you're going to come here and you get a little bit of silicone solution that you drip into this. So you're gonna come here, loan it through here, and then down through here. So you only use this if you're using a delicate thread that needs some conditioning. Otherwise, you're gonna go through this. So you have to imagine this machine like it is your sewing machine, facing this way. So if you were sitting at this machine, you'd be facing it from this way. This little thing right here is the same thing that's on the back of your sewing machine. So you come down and loop around that thing behind the back of your mm -hmm. sewing machine. Okay, then to thread it, you go right straight across here. This is your thread path. This is your take-up lever. So uh, again, imagine you're sitting in front of it. Your take-up lever would be right there, just like it is. And then you thread like normal through that. So your, your tension discs are in here, your take-up lever is in here. All of that is in the same place it would be if you were facing your sewing machine from this side. Okay? On this side, this is your bobbin winder. This is your pretensioner for your bobbin winder right here. This is your <clears throat> flywheel. So in order to use your flywheel, you depress it and then turn it. So you can turn it till you're blue in the face. You have to depress it and then turn it. Your on off switch and your power cord are both back here, which would be in the exact same place if you were looking at the machine like you do your normal machine from mm -hmm. this side. Also your USB ports um, and all that kind of stuff are over here for we're doing firmware updates or whatever, they're all in here. Okay. On this side, you have a manual thread cutter. So there's actually a blade right in there. So you just go like that with your thread and it cuts your thread. Your automatic needle threader, semi-automatic needle threaders right there. And it works the same way as your normal machine does. Your foot is attached right here. And it works the same way as the normal feet do. We're using a number nine darning foot for free motion quilting. That hooks just like your normal one does. Your throat plate works just like the normal ones do. So go ahead and push down. There you go. That's all your workings. And then your bobbin case door is right here. And it's a front load bobbin. Just okay, is there a door on it actually? Mm -hmm. really, it's open. Oh, okay. I see. And then there's a thread cutter in there, just like on your normal machine uh -huh. right there. And so that bobbin goes in like this. Mm -hmm. so, so this is over to the right. Now. Correct. Just like a normal machine. All right. So the hook does not come out of this machine. So unlike on our four, five, and seven series, you're not pulling the hook out uh -huh. to clean it on this machine. It's It stays in. This is a rotary hook machine. Okay. So now let's talk about cleaning and oiling. So you want to clean this, and we're on page seven now. You want to clean this regularly, um, especially as you, when you're quilting, you're going to get lint and all kinds of goobers in there. So you just clean out like you normally would there, and then you come, yep, exactly right. You get it all cleaned out. Now, take the flywheel, depress it, and rotate it until you can see, really, 
right there. So can you see those two whole two little indentations yep, right there and there mm -hmm. there and there you're going to put a drop of oil and this is the fine grade oil that we use on the top of the line Berninas is what we use on this machine as well and you do this once a day once a day yep and then you're going to go ahead and put your throat plate back on do you have to bring that around again or no, anything okay. well to get your bobbin in okay that's easy that's all there is to this is a closed system machine so there's not a lot of places you can get into um, to get trouble in this machine you just want to keep this area clean okay you're going to use um just a normal just a soft cloth to mm -hmm. clean your your screen and just keep the top of it dusted off and keep things this is one of your fans keep stuff away from that um just make sure you keep it clean and then you're good okay we're going to skip page eight because that is for a framed machine now we're going to go to nine which is winding and inserting the bobbin okay so this is our bobbin i've already shown you it's m class when you wind the bobbin and you can kind of tell on that picture the Bernina logo goes toward the machine. Yep. So you don't ever have to remember which way your bobbin is winding because if you wind the bobbin logo in and you load the bobbin logo out, your bobbin will always be going in the right way. So wind it logo in, load it logo out. Okay, you're gonna take your thread. And all of this, this is the, the the good part of the Bernina long arms, one of the good parts, is that everything is done in the front. You don't have to whoop, whoop, whoop. Go through here. Then here. Now come down here, go in front of it and to the back and over. All right. And then there's a little, um, what, do, what do we call this? There's a little, um, See the, see the arrow? See the, uh -huh. it's not an indentation, it's a... Yeah, an arrow, and you're yeah. going to follow the arrow. About four or five times, just like you normally do. Uh-huh, and then down. There just you go. like a regular... Just like a regular one. There's also an arrow on your flywheel that tells you which way you should be turning your flywheel. Okay. So it goes this way. It goes that way instead of this way. Correct. Well, yeah, if it was... That. Yeah. And then there's threading arrows, so if you look right here... It tells you about threading. Mm -hmm. This tells you about threading. So there's lots of cues on this machine. Okay. So really, this would be a, just a really easy transition from if you have a Bernina. Very easy. Yeah. 770 it's or... the same thing. Yeah. yeah. The same machine. Now you can stop that anytime you would want to. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. You just flip the thing out. Yeah. So just like that. Uh -huh. Okay, now just like you would with the others, there's a cutting blade in the top of your winder, so you can just come down over that, cut it. All right, now to load a bobbin, you remember I said logo out? Mm -hmm. You're gonna take your bobbin case with the logo out, put it in there, and take your thread and pull it into the groove, just like you would a normal bobbin case. You see the slip? Yeah. There, you got it. It's right there. Okay, so pull right into that slit and then up through, and then just make sure you're pulling. Okay. Now, do you have to open this up? Or I don't. can you just, just push, push it, it in? in. Okay, and that goes right inside that bobbin case. Push it in until you feel it snap. Take your thread, put it into the cutter, cut it, shut your bobbin door so that you don't break it, basically. It's not going to hurt anything. You can leave it open, but if you nudge it, you could break it. I don't want to do that. Go ahead and put your foot back on. Your, your foot is down. No, it's not. I lied. Your foot is up. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. We did that. That was easy. That was very easy. So you get a bobbin case tension gauge, this little guy, uh, with your long arm. I have to be honest with you, I have never used this. I have never had a problem with my tension. I have not jacked around with my tension. So this is not the easiest thing in the planet to use, 
If you're used to it, that's great. Go ahead and use it. Um, what you do is you load your bobbin in here and then you run it through these tensioners and you pull and it'll register what your tension is. And then you should adjust your bobbin uh, case um, if it's off. I gotta tell you, they come from the factory adjusted correctly. Don't mess with it. You mess yeah. with your bobbin tension absolutely last. You always adjust your top tension before you adjust your bobbin tension. You'll cause yourself troubles. Don't do that. Okay, so let's thread the machine. So you're gonna go ahead and take your thread off of the bobbin side. Okay, you're gonna go there and you're gonna come up through here to here. And what's this one for? That's for another uh, decorative oh, school okay. or whatever, if you have and another school. Down here. Uh huh. And we and don't need go to go through, through this, right? Right here. Go down here. And there you go. Okay. Straight across. Do you see this arrow right mm -hmm. here? This machine can be threaded for twin needles. So okay. it has two tension gauges, or tensioners. And if you don't get all the way to the left or right, you're gonna be in the second needle tension and you're gonna have thread breaking. Okay. So what you do when you thread this is you're gonna exaggerate. So you see how that, you're okay. gonna go like that. Oh, it's like the 880, what you do when right. you have to do that bobbin thing. You pull it all the way out to make sure you're in the right side. Yeah and then come around. There you go. Now come under this and here through your take up lever, you're gonna thread it through there. Okay, and come down right through here. Okay, then you're gonna come to the other side of this. Perfect, and then you're gonna come around this and into that, yep. And then you're gonna use your needle threader to thread your needle. Okay. Speaking of needles, we're just using regular Schmetz clothing needles in here. We do not have long arm needles. Because this just threads just like the... Exactly like, yep. Okay. All right. And then this cuts your thread. Cuts your thread right up there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's talk about how you change a needle. Now, I told you we've got just a regular needle in there. Let's talk about changing the needle. You have this star-shaped needle thing. Yes, exactly right. It's right on the front. So you loosen that and then drop it and then same as the regular one, flat side to the back. You put your needle in, flat side to the back, and you tighten it. And there you go. All there is to it. Um, real briefly, before we close out for this one, we'll come back with some quilting uh, examples, but Let's review some things that are in here. So you're gonna get a tube of five bobbins. You get your Bernina stitch regulator, or stitch <laughs> regulator. Blah, 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 blah. Well, it does regulate them. It, does, it regulates them. <laughs> stitch ripper, seam ripper. You get your screwdriver for the needle. You get just a little regular flathead screwdriver, and that's for attaching and detaching things. You get a couple of thread nets. And these are really, really handy if you're using a polyester, um, one of those slick, silky threads that will recoil when you quilt real fast and stop, this will stop thread breaking. So this is a good thing. Um, we mentioned the silicone stuff to go on this pad. That's what this is. You get a pack of needles. Um, you get, this is another set screw for the needle. Um, you get a, a nice cloth to clean your um, screen, screen with. You get some spool caps. You get a, this is another needle threader, and this is for when you're using a twin needle to 
thread both of those needles because your needle threader won't work when you have a twin needle in. And you get a couple of these guys. You get a cheesy cleaning brush, and you will notice when we cleaned, we used the, uh, the Coney brush yeah. that's much nicer because it gets more stuff. But that's all, plus you get your, your bobbin tension gauge. So that's all the goodies that you get with this machine. Okay, that's enough for today. We've covered a whole bunch of stuff. Play around with your settings, thread it, unthread it, thread it, unthread it, wind your bobbins, get used to that kind of stuff. And next time we come back, we will talk about stitching. See you then.